Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Harvey B. Gann Center's Family First, Arts from a Distance. For this special Black History Month theme workshop, we'll learn about the work of painter, muralist, and illustrator, Louis Delsart, led by master teaching artist, Brian Wilson. Let's get painting. We hope you enjoy. Greetings. How's everybody doing today? I'm Brian Wilson, and I'm honored to be sharing with you a little bit about a former teacher of mine, Louis Delsart. He's definitely a giant in my eyes and in many people's eyes in terms of um, not just Black artists, but as a, an artist, a painter in his own right. Uh, I had the honor of learning from him when I first started my art journey at Morris Brown College in Atlanta, which is part of the Atlanta University system. Um, he was my first painting teacher ever. And I remember fondly having discussions with him and uh, just kind of bonding over how I, how do I start this? You know, a lot of my artwork I'd always drawn. I, I had many drawings that I proposed to the department, the fine art department at Morris Brown back in, uh, I think it was 1998, <laughs> somewhere around there. Um, I'm telling my age a bit, but uh, I, I certainly appreciate the Gantt Center and all the staff for having me and allowing me to share a little bit about my, my teacher, his mentor and all of this good stuff. Uh, he was definitely a, he was a painter's painter. He grew up in, um, he grew up in New York City his parents were very cultured. He, um, his family actually was exposed to artists of the Harlem Renaissance. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever because those were some of my favorite artists when I first started um, my art journey. And uh, it was just amazing to hear some of, some of his stories. And um, I just wanna remind you guys to, you know, certainly Comment, you know, ask, feel free to ask questions in the, in the chat. Uh, we, will, we will get those answered uh, best of our ability as quickly as possible. Uh, I want us all to feel comfortable, confident, and uh, we're just gonna have a, a nice time creating some art together today. All right. Um, so one thing I would love to do, can I get, can I get uh, Mr. Del Sart's artwork? We're gonna pull up some of his artwork so we just take a look. Let's break down what, some of his, his masterful strokes reveal to us. We'll bring that up here in just a second. As we're waiting on that, I remember Mr. Delsart was last in Charlotte back in 2014. I was able to see him when he had, there was an exhibit of his work uh, here at the Gantt, and I was able to, to catch up with them. That was a, a great honor. All right, all right, all right, New Jersey. I'm, yeah, I, I'm a New Jersey native myself. Grew up in Piscataway, New Jersey. We moved around a lot, though. Uh, my parents had, had us between uh, Jersey and Georgia. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't the greatest, but, um, you know, I, I got to see 
two very different sides of the, of the country. And uh, one thing that really relates to the work of Mr. Del Sark, he was very expressive. He was a realist, but it, it's more of an expressive type of realism. I like to call it like a lyrical re realism because there's so much movement, there's so much texture, color, as you'll see when we get these, these images up for you in a bit. Um, one, of the, one of the things he really zeroed in on, I think in his work while I was under his tutelage was calling to recalling and, and memory. Memory was a big thing. Um, just those fond memories of his childhood, um, documenting the black experience. He's seen a lot. He was born in 1944. So coming up from that era, he came up in an era where uh, there was definitely a lot of, you know, a lot going on socially as, you know, pretty much like we see today, but we have our predecessors from the 50s and 60s to thank, and he, he came up during that era. Um, and so that, that certainly influenced his work as artists that's what we do. We document the human experience, um, but even more specifically, we get to document, um, you know, American life through the black lens. Is is how I like to to think about it. And he was I th he was a master of it. He was a master of it. So um, we're gonna we're gonna try to mimic some of <laughs> some of what I analyze as I look at his work. Um, if I, I I'm just gonna see if we can bring that up. If we can't, we have an um, I might need to show it in a little bit. Oh, hold on. Here we go. All right, here we go. Perfect. This is one of his awesome um, works here. Uh, you see definitely reminiscent of like a family gathering. And he very could, uh, this very could well be reminiscent of some of those artists I spoke about from the Harlem Renaissance. His family was uh, very cultured, as I told you. Um, musicians, writers, other artists, um, you name it. And he, he was well-traveled. And just let's take a look at, let's break down some of the formal elements of the work, because that's what's going to help inform us as we dive in here to our work in a little bit. So let's first and foremost, color, right? Color, wow. That's how we make, that's probably the first thing that pops when we look at any work of art. But one thing I remember about Mr. Del, Del Sartre's work, and still to this day, Look at how bold and bright these colors are. Generally in nature, we don't see colors as intense as what he uses. So his work is very evocative like that. He used color so easily. And a lot of people think it's, oh, let's just throw color here. Uh, there, it was so well-placed. Um, that's one thing I just really, really appreciate it. Look how bright these yellows are. Look how bright the blues are. Um, all of the color like that magenta is not your typical red, right? Um, let's move on to texture. Look at, sometimes there's some, you can find some of the water from the diluted paint causing some distortion. If you look down the bottom right corner with those figures, even the figures, you pay attention to the figures, they look realistic. He was an incredible draftsman. He was always drawing, that's what he did since he was a kid, but the focus, if you can tell, is not really in how realistic the figures were. It's really about him giving you the impression of this moment in time, this particular memory, right? Um, so a lot of different types of texture um, that he's using. Um, layers. Cool. All right. So one thing you notice also is how the not, not only is he placing flat color, but colors are running into each other. Each other. There's overlapping going on. Incredible sense of depth that he's creating without really modeling. If you really take a good look, if you look at each individual figure, um, they're not over modeled, which in, in this case, when I say that, I'm talking about how realistic he's going in and getting all the folds of the color, all the nuance of the facial features and everything really, um, from a painter's standpoint, if I wanted to do a, a elaborate portrait, it would not come out like this, but that would, that would the focus is different. His, his um, intention was not to really zoom in. He doesn't want the viewer to just stop and rest upon one face. It's about the whole composition. And that's one thing we want to talk about here. So composition, what do I mean by that? 
composition is how we arrange this work of art. So I have this, I have this board that, you know, I, I suggested, you know, whatever you were able to get, um, you know, as you join me today is cool, but the space, this is one thing we talk about. One of our elements is space. Okay. So how, this is the area I have to work within. And one thing I like to tell my students is you want to even, you want to take a couple of minutes just to plan how you want to organize your space. So I, I do what we call thumbnails. Okay. Thumbnail sketches are a way for me to kind of get an idea of how I want to place my, um, my figures or whatever I'm doing. Now, what I chose for my piece today was I'm going to make this somewhat of an expressive self-portrait, just because I'm a I'm a figurative artist. You can see my work here behind me is uh, from my series balancing uh, balance my juggling act. So I'm balancing, you know, being a father and my own artwork. So those are my two great passions, and you know, I try. I have it is a juggling act. So I'm a figurative painter by heart, you know, by nature. So it was natural for me to choose a, a self-portrait, but that doesn't have to be your option. Shoes can be symbolic. I know one, one thing, if I'm not doing a self-portrait, one thing I'm doing is collecting shoes. So I'm, I'm, I'm a, I call myself an amateur sneaker head, okay? So if I was not doing a self-portrait, I would probably draw a picture of, you know, some sneakers or something like that, but it's not, it's not for vanity. So as a child of the 80s, a hip hop kid, um, the stories. So again, this ties back into um, what Mr. Delsart did, documentation, recollection, you know, recalling memory. Uh, for me, sneakers and for many sneakerheads, it's like collecting these shoes that, that represented a memory. That was a special point in time. And the way it, I, I love watching documentaries on sneakers because that's an art form. Designing ours. So I don't, I, I throw that in there because any of you who are like, oh, I don't know, I can't draw people. I don't know. Listen, we're not, I'm not judging anyone's, <laughs> you know, ability to do portraiture. That's a whole other workshop. That's a whole class, semester, year long class, right? That's a lifelong journey if we're talking about portraiture. But remember, as I pointed out earlier with Mr. Delsart's work, this is about exploring memory, it's about exploring and documenting. Um, how you feel about a certain instance or a period of time. Um, so back to composition. How do we how do we dive in here? So like I said, if you take, I'm gonna give you guys take one minute. Let's just take one minute, and if you have a blank, you know, clear sheet of paper, a few boxes here. Okay, and I, I you know, I understand it's not fair. I kind of got a, a bit of a head start there. Um, but I just played around with my reference image. Thank you. So you can see my reference image here. It's a self-portrait that I just took in my in my house uh, a while back. Um, and I actually get I get in the habit of documenting. You know, every so often I'll, I'll take a self-portrait, sort of like the great Rembrandt did way back in the day, um, just to see how you've grown <laughs> and changed over time. Um, so here. You can see I've placed the figure, which is myself, pretty central in the, in the space. And I'm just coloring that in just so you can see. I like to balance my shapes. I like to think of my shapes pretty abstractly um, when, I, when I start off uh, any, any composition. So here you can see where it's more central. Here I've moved it off to the left to create more space. There's a possibility maybe I want to elaborate on some memories um, off to the, to the right of the figure. And notice this is a vertical orientation. So that's something you, when you're playing around with composition, you wanna also determine, well, what, how am I going to orient my, my space? So am I gonna keep it vertical? Do I wanna flip it horizontal? Plan your work, work your plan, right? So this is why I'm just trying to very quickly figure out what I want to do. I can, once again, I've moved myself over to the right and that gives me even more space if I want to do more experimentation over here to the right, okay? So I'm going to give you guys a quick minute so you can give yourself some time to explore just a few options. That's only, uh, really briefly, you can see I just quickly 
jotted that stuff, uh, that down on a, on a piece of paper. While you're doing that, I'm gonna choose which one. So I just showed you what I had. Um, I think I wanna situate myself. I think I like option number two. All right. So option number two is where I'm more so off to the left, okay, and sort of cropped. And I'm going to briefly now, again, this is not a portrait project. It is a portrait project, but it's not that type of portrait project. We're trying to emulate the great, the late great um, Professor Louis Delsart, okay? Um, so again, my focus is not necessarily on capturing realism as much as I just want to document this space, this time where I'm sort of exploring who I am at this moment, what's important to me. So for those of you looking for inspiration, it could be some object that is symbolic to you, okay? Um, it could be uh, uh, someone offered that they were from New Jersey. What landmarks do you remember from New Jersey? What do you remember about the landscape of New Jersey or the cityscape, depending on which part? Because I know all my Jersey fam knows that there's very, some people don't realize there's a lot of country in New Jersey. <laughs> there's a lot of farms. Um, as, and then there's the very city-ish part. You know, a lot of people think Newark when they think New Jersey, right? All right, so anyways, let me, just a light sketch from, um, in pencil, just so I can kind of capture general shape, general shapes, guys. And all my little, my young ones out there, again, use shapes. Use basic shapes to represent who you are or whatever it is that you're drawing. Might not even be drawing a person, okay? I'm gonna leave it simple like that. I want, and I, and I can go over this. There was, let me just take a quick second um, and just talk to you a little bit about what I have out. So I do have my, we know some board or if you have heavyweight card stock, um, you might be wondering why is, this, why is this board that weird color? As a painter, I've been painting probably 17 years now. Um, I like to start with a toned or stained background. That's because it helps me judge how light or how dark my colors are. That's just a painter's, that's up to the painter, right? It's not a rule, all right? Um, so just in case you were curious. I'm gonna, I have a Sharpie here. I'm gonna kind of darken for the sake of the camera. I wanna make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So I brought the Sharpie into it. I don't generally draw a lot with Sharpies, but we're gonna, one, one thing, we're gonna enjoy the process. I purposely did not do a, a, a practice version because I want it to be fresh. Because a lot of times you'll teach something, people are like, oh, well, you, you've been doing this a long time or you had a chance to prepare. I'm going into this fresh just like you. I have an example of something similar I've done just for the sake of example. And look here, this was, I, this was pretty stylized, right? So there's some texture here, there's some words. I did this at a workshop that I attended a while back. There's a raised surface here. Um, there's, this is tissue paper as opposed to construction paper. Again, we're gonna experiment with some stuff. So I got my Sharpie. Um, remember I said Mr. Delsart used very intense colors. So intense colors come right out of the tube. That means that I didn't mix anything to dull the colors down. And that's pretty much what complicates color for a lot of people is like, well, how do I get that right color? We're not worried about matching color today, right? That's another workshop, another time. So here I've got yellow, I've got a blue, and I've got a red, pretty close to the primary colors you were, and, and I have white, sorry, and I have uh, white um, that you may have learned. I know everybody probably had at least one art class in elementary school or, um, you know, whenever. Uh, and this is just palette paper. Now, if you have regular paper for the sake of one session, you know, if you want to double up your paper, because let's just assume folks are like, I don't know, I don't, what am I doing? If you want to fold it, fold it again. Well, actually just fold it once. And you do similar to what I did, you know, just place, you know, some daubs of color at the top there. As long as it lasts long enough for you to do a session, which this is a very short, once we start, actually doing the, the drawing and painting, 40 minutes is gonna go by really fast. So um, that's why I'm talking fast. And uh, I'm gonna try to, um, I'll take a quick second to, you know, if anyone, I know there's some chats in there. All right, everybody's good? Awesome, awesome. Uh, what am I missing out? Oh, brushes, anytime you're gonna paint, 
You gotta have brushes, right? I'm a brush. Okay, so I collect sneakers and I collect paint brushes. I can't help it. Over the over the you know during quarantine, I was I admit a lot of my stimulus went to supplies and sneakers. I'm not gonna lie. I forgive me. All right, but anyways, I got a few. You always want a variety. Small brushes, you know, slightly bigger brush. I kind of gauge my sizes of my brushes based on the surface that I'm using. So it's not really a large surface. It's pretty medium. It's not that small. Depends on your definition of small or large, okay? I did mention probably in the, uh, in the supplies, um, a spray bottle. Remember when we looked at Mr. Delsart's work, you did see some splatters. How do we get splatters? Well, you kind of spray them on. There's several ways. Some people use brushes, like I've even seen people do toothbrushes and you, you have some paint on there and you kind of do the thing with the, you, you would have to get your hands dirty. I'm one of those gentlemanly painters where I try to stay clean as much as possible, but that's not everybody. <laughs> um, uh, uh, unlike Mr. Delsart, he always had that smog. If you look up pictures of him online, he, well, he literally did wear that smog. Like when you think artist, Anytime I thought artist, he was he fit that stereotype, like the smart paint splatter smart everywhere. But anyways, brushes. Um, and I think we're good to go. All right. So let me go over my drawing. I tried to make sure I stalled while you guys did a little experimentation with your thumbnail sketches there. Here is my I'm going to draw in Sharpie, which is something I don't do, but I'm experimenting. Um, I mean, with, yeah, I don't generally draw in Sharpie. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of, I don't want, again, I don't want this to be overly realistic. So I'm trying to choose my lines very carefully. I'm trying to capture this hoodie. I purposely took this picture in a black hoodie. Who remembers why, you know, we're in the midst of Black History Month. So, who thinks they know why it's important for me to capture um, myself, a black male, in a black hoodie? What what connotations do those have for you? Um, so I'll I'll check back to the chat in a bit to see who what you guys had to say about that. All right, um, I'm gonna get a little bit of my indication of my hair. Okay, basic nose. Again, I'm not checking to see how realistic you are. I'm gonna get my, my mouth in there, my, my cheesy mustache and goatee. <laughs> there's my eye, there's one eye, an eyebrow. Boom, okay, now this looks nothing like me, but again, I'm not really, I'm not concerned with that right now, okay? All right, um, what I wanna do, one of the reasons also why I wanted to have some Sharpie, if I, I wanna kind of start this base layer. Painting, I don't care what your approach is, is always gonna involve layers. Um, so I want to really dive in. So I've got some water. Oh, don't forget water anytime, especially with acrylic. Yes, Trayvon Martin, exactly. So that's a nod to Trayvon Martin. I, I am working on a, another series of work where I'm trying to dispel the myth of the black hoodie meaning that an African-American is a menace, all right? So um, that's a, it's a current series I'm working on called Walking on Eggshells, uh, or in other words, Black Man Woes, so the W-O-E-S. But, um, you know, we, as you see here, I'm a teacher. I am probably the, the most non-threatening Black male you will meet. Um, so I don this Black hoodie as much as I can because... I'm like, listen, we, we can desensitize, you know, change the narrative. And that's another thing we do as artists is we, we have an opportunity to really change how perception is. But let me dive into this painting. So I'm gonna dive, I'm gonna dive into this water. I want my paint real watery. I think for the background, I'm gonna do, I want a watered down blue. Let's see if I, I'm gonna grab some of my blue here. So you can see the consistency. It's really watered down. Okay, and I'm gonna start in the background. And we'll just continue adding water as much as I can. Let me move this over so you can see where I am. And also I start in the background on purpose. I tell my students I work back to front, dark to light. Okay, I'm just gonna scribble that, scribble that in. 
I'm not going to get real meticulous because one, we don't have a whole lot of time and I want to really get into this. I'm sorry. I've been talking, 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 but I want to make sure I'm engaging you guys. I'm going to darken that a little bit on this side. I'm going to add a little red to that just because I want to add a little variety. I want this side to be a little bit different than that side. Okay. Okay. What are, one thing about painting, you can't be, you can't worry too much about saving paint. Like it, you're not gonna learn how to paint if you're, if you're gonna be frugal and say, oh, I don't wanna wait, this paint was expensive. I don't wanna use too much. Listen, that ain't the way to go. <laughs> my, my teachers, including Mr. Delsart, you need more paint. He was probably, he was the first one to ever tell me that. I would, cause I was a broke college student and the paint was expensive. If you got no money and you have to buy something that equals expensive, right? So there was that. All right. Um, one thing I'm gonna do, I just got a thought. I, ha I do have some glue also. What do I enjoy most about being a professional artist? I, what I enjoy at this point is just being able, teaching full-time allows me to, you know, not worry about paying bills from strictly from my art. So I get to pick and choose opportunities. I get to create the work I wanna create. Just like I was telling you about my Black Man Woes series. Um, I don't have to worry about who likes it, who doesn't like it. I'm documenting something, I'm saying what I wanna say. And, you know, I just, I go with it. That was, uh, thank you for that question. Um, really quick, you can see I'm using some, just a glue stick, because what I've decided, instead of painting, because I'm, I want the, the black hoodie to stand out a little more, I'm gonna take some black construction paper. And I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna mimic this shape a little bit. You know, this sliver right here, I'm gonna take a sliver, I'm gonna take my scissors, and I'm just gonna cut a quick sliver of this black. You know, it's really, it's, it's liberating for you to not have all the pressure. Don't pressure yourself. Um, the great, I think when you start getting really good at stuff, um, it's because you've spent time doing stuff without the pressure, okay? So there's my strip of black. And I'm gonna put some here as well. I'm gonna try to quickly draw out this shape. I'm gonna mimic this shape now on this side. Let me just quickly, there we go. Put that out. And you know what? You don't, you don't even have to use scissors all the time. One of the things, I like the immediacy of experimentation. And that's one thing Mr. Delsart did endlessly. He was always experimenting. He would work, he would work back into pieces that he, he began over and over. So yet he spent a lot of time working and reworking and working some more. Um, so that's the process. I tell my students all the time, don't forsake the process. Um, you can't expect, don't go into a project thinking, oh, I have to get this perfect. I have to get this just right or else it's a failure. Well, we, we need that. We need that failure. I, I heard a video uh, that Will Smith did that I shared with my students a few years ago. He said, fail early, fail often, and fail forward. And I, I love that because I'm like, well, yeah, our, our whole, we got to change our perception on failure. And, and artists know this more than anybody, I think, is the only way we're going to get anywhere with our work is trying and failing and then learning. Cause nothing, you know, any of us that have tried something and it didn't work out, you realize that that lesson stood with you more than any other lesson, right? <laughs> so that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so I'm gonna clean that up. So you notice I just put, you know, I, I did have a white t-shirt on. Do I wanna change that? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I've got some other colors here. One thing I might do, I might rip, because I want I want to free you guys up. I'm not going to do the, uh, the scissors. I'm just going to take some of this. I'm going to rip this.
And I don't know, for some reason I want flowing, some, some rhythm, some flowing rhythm. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of rip this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So maybe I like it, maybe I won't like it. And this is part of, you know, you trying things and if you don't like it, you know, I can, if I don't like it, I can pull it up. If I want a different color, I can try a different color. So I'm just gonna, right where I put that paint, we're gonna put that glue down. Why do I want some flowingness? Because I feel like in life for me, I'm interpreting the, what I want to express in this moment is how my identity at this point, I've, I'm evolving, right? I'm evolving as an artist. I'm evolving in terms of how I view what's important in life. And that's just how I'm choosing to, you know, depict some of this. So that's what that is. And I, I cannot wait to see what some of you guys are coming up with. The red is also indicative or uh, indicates, you know, obviously we have red stripes in our flag, right? So that does say something about who I am. I'm an American artist. Okay. So there's that. Whoops, a little more glue. How am I doing on time? All right, looking good. Any other pertinent questions in the chat? I'm trying to make sure I'm, I'm keeping it moving and nobody's like, what do I do next? Or what comes next? Um, hair, hair. One thing I do for if I, I don't want it to be like black, like the paper. I know this is not a paint mixing tutorial, but notice if I grab all three of my primaries, so I got yellow, red, and blue. I'm gonna just mix them all together here. And I want it to go a little darker because of my hair. But my hair, I always want that dark to have a tinge of my skin tone in it. So there's my dark on my palette. All right, okay, I'm, I'm getting time checks here, guys. All right, so I'm just gonna paint into the, the hair there. And we, we, I'm fully aware that this is not, I'm, I'm hoping this is something you continue. That's what I'm hoping is that we've begun this experimental expressive piece and you guys will continue at home even after we log off here. And you're, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I spark something and you're like, you know what? One, I like that dude, Louis Del Sark. I really wanna learn more about his, uh, see more of his work. I like that guy, Brian whatever his last name was. I'm glad he's teaching and I'm glad he's here. <laughs> and, um, you know, let's just, I would love to, you know, even if you guys want to reach back out uh, at some other point and say, hey, you know what? You guys, I think they, they posted my, my information um, in the chat or it was, it was in the presentation earlier. So feel free to hit me up. And don't forget to tag any, if you've, if you've screenshotted anything or if you've taken a picture of your work, don't forget to tag uh, the Gantt Center. And I know, I'm sure that information is available in the chat as well. They'll tell you exactly what, what tags to use. My memory as I'm getting older is <laughs> not as you know, sharp as it used to be. <laughs> and you see here, just a quick recap. I'm uh, so I just mixed up a quick skin tone. You may not want a realistic looking skin tone, and I know this is this is looking lighter than it actually is because the light is shining right down on my my paint, and so because the paint is wet, it's giving that glare. So trust me, I'm not <laughs> I, I'm not as light as what I see in that camera. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I am light in real life, but you know. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> All right. My students get on me for my dad jokes. I'll just be honest. I'm okay being that goofy guy. All right. All right, what else? Well, I wanna throw some, let's throw some, okay. I, you promised me splatter paint. Where, when are you gonna splatter some paint? Um, first, let me point out, I love how this water 
I, I pointed this out in Mr. Delsart's work earlier. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Whoops. See how the, yes, that bloom, you see how the water's blooming? That's the kind of stuff I want to see, all right? Um, now, I have my spray bottle. Yes. What can I do if I want to spray paint? And I'm going to remember, I'm, just, I'm going to be very careful. <laughs> um, I'm going to put a little bit of this red, a couple, a little bit of red in there. And I'm going to shake that up because I know before I know it, the time's going to run out. And there's probably some eight year old out there that's like, he said he was going to splatter some paint. And I didn't splatter paint. All right. And so one thing you can do, and please, oh, let me preface this parent. I know before the parents get mad at me, I'm in a workshop space, right? I'm hoping your space is covered. Do not try this without covering your table or having an apron on of some sort, because I don't want people mad at me. My child got paint all over them. And I want the Gant to pay for his new shirt because I just, that's his school shirt. Okay, so I'm gonna, here we go. You ready? I mixed it up. All right. Actually, I don't think, I think I, there's some paint, you can barely see it. Now, some of that water is going to, um, actually, I only used, the, I may not have mixed enough, but you get the idea. I also, as a backup, I brought a, uh, an eyedropper. I'm gonna put more paint in there. I do see some pink running, especially in that white, but again, because of the camera, I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, and this may not, this was the only spray bottle I had in my house, sorry. There are better atomizers is what they call them. They're like smaller bottles, but there's like a little squirt top, okay. There we go. Some of this may, there we go. Like I can let the paint run. There we go. There's more paint. I don't know if you can see the paint that's in there, but you know. Another thing you can do. Let me see here. I can um I can open this spray bottle. I have an eyedropper. I squeeze that, put that in there. Okay. That seems to come up. That seems to have come out better than spraying it. And this is process. You experiment with the process. All right. So this eyedropper sees. Look, I, I'm gonna bring. So you see, I'm trying to play on that, and I'm adding layer. I'm going on. I'm overlapping. I think I need a little more of that. But you guys get the the gist here. Um, there's. I'm trying to be consistent with the design, but I'm trying different things. So there's what we call in art, unity and variety, right? There's a variety of techniques and approaches, but I'm trying to, I'm still want the whole entire piece to be unified in, you know, in its total, in, you know, all together in the end, the end result, okay? All right, so let me grab, let me grab another brush. Actually, let me clean that one. What are we doing out there, guys? Actually, let me grab another. I need a color that pops. I'm gonna grab, I haven't done much with this yellow. All right, let's be cheesy. Oh, my yellow sun. But I don't want, I'm, I promise, I'm not gonna do the little spikes there. Although that would be reminiscent of, you know, childhood. Let me angle this because I'm seeing a glare. I just want you to get a better look. All right, so you see I'm layering. I would love to grab some, I didn't bring tissue paper, but now I'm thinking, oh, you know what? The transparency of the tissue paper. You, again, if you look at Mr. Del Sart's work, a lot of transparent um, paint, uh, because remember I, I talked to you about um, memory and place in his work. Um, you know, sense of, you know, you know con the impression of a certain time and space. All right, you'll be able to turn on. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna get ready to see. I'm excited to see what you guys are gonna do. But yeah, the, um, 
I was talking about memories. So if you think about dreams or when you recall things, you, you remember things in spats, right? Bits and pieces. And that's what I think about when I look at his work is like how it's interwoven. You know, there's like this memory here. I could easily, like if I go into this, I could take my pencil. Maybe I'm, you know, oops. There's memories of playing basketball. You know, me shooting basketball. There's, you know, if this is, oops, a friend, you know, me and my friend shooting hoops, playing basketball in my backyard. As I mentioned, and actually basketball is what led to my obsession with sneakers, you know, the great Michael Jordan, right? That's what started the whole sneaker culture. <laughs> so I can sketch moments of time and that's kind of what he did. Sometimes he would, you know, he would allow these bits and pieces of memory to meld together, which was really awesome. All right, I'm checking the time here. How am I doing answering questions, guys? All right, cool. All right, so there was some light. I'm always aware of my light source. I'm gonna, I want this to bleed out a little more. So I'm gonna add some water. This is just plain water. And I just dab that on the side. I want that to kind of emanate from the sun. And so that's why I added the yellow highlights on my head, my jacket. So some, we got some layers. See, this was, this was the brief sketch. Now, if I had more time, I would go in and, you know, make that a little more believable in terms of two guys playing basketball. But, you know, I sketched that in there. I might think of something else, you know, but uh, let me see, what can I do to, what, what might I want to do? All right, four minutes until the showcase. So I'm gonna, I'm, I got a few minutes to do what I'm gonna do. Sometime, um, oh, and check the chat to learn how you can, you know, share what you've done. Cause we're gonna, you know, in a few minutes, we're gonna see what you guys have been up to while I've been running my mouth and trying to do this at the same time. Little known fact, it is not easy to talk and work and do art at the same time, but, but we make it do what it does, right? We make it work, we make it work. All right, what do I wanna do? Actually, I'm gonna add some more of this yellow-ish color just to kind of create the illusion of some of these wrinkles in my jacket. You know, that was my, uh, my hoodie. Um, let's see what else I wanna do. Another thing I wanted to mention, so as you're working, what do I do if I don't like it? Well, paint is paint, right? So you let this dry and you can paint over it. Another thing artists do um, I'll be honest, destruction is a part of the artist process sometimes. I don't mean throwing the whole piece out. What I mean is maybe you erase something. How do you erase paint? Well, again, you can take back, you can take whatever this color is in the background. If I wanted to take some of this blue and like, if I wanted to do something else with this face, cause I'm like, oh, that does not look like me. Remember my background color was blue. I can go over this. I can, you know, knock it back some. Your cool colors like blue, green, they make things recede or they, they go further back in space. Whereas your bright, your warm colors like yellow and red, they, they help things pop. So if you want something to come forward in your artwork, look at what colors you're using. You know, throw some warm colors, some red, some yellow, boom. But like I said, I want some blue because what if I want to change that? And I'm just showing you, for example, if I wanted to change some of what I was doing, you're like, why are you going over the face? What? Well, remember, I can go back over it. It's okay. It's okay if I want to change that. Or what if I use this to kind of make myself more integrated into the background? And you know, the background is blue, so there we go. And then I can use another brush if I want to really make this the part of my face that's in light pop. I just use a lighter version of that color. So you know, I can mix up a quick skin tone, some orange, and a little bit of blue. That will make it go brown. As you can see here, bottom right corner, hopefully I can. And also changing the thickness of your paint. So right now, again, Mr. Delsart, a lot of transparency, transparent layer over transparent layer. And, you know, but one thing about learning from 
artists of the past. You take from them what you will for your work, and then you put your own spin on it. So you might want to go a little thicker. You know, my paint, the way I paint is more opaque or thick. So I can, so I can use this to kind of pull, pull my face out of the shadows, so to speak. All right, and I'm gonna, I know, I know that time is running down. So I might need to, all right, two more minutes to check the chat, uh, check the chat to share your work with us. All right, getting down to the nitty gritty, getting down to the nitty gritty. So yeah, I, I need to, I would definitely love to put another like three hours into this. Uh, and I'm hoping what I will hear in the chat is, you know what? I am definitely going to work on this more on my own. And I'm sure some of you will. I, I encourage you guys, those of you who, you know, maybe your parents and you're, you've got a child that you're monitoring do this. Yeah, make sure they finish it. I mean, you'll be surprised um, how this looks on your wall. Get, get you a frame, boom. You got some great art, some original art, one of a kind, right? All right. Get some more of that dark just to go back into my hair. I purposely didn't bring black because I, I like to mix. Again, I'm a painter, so obviously I'm gonna like to mix color. All right. Um, so let me take an assessment here. I want you guys to see, cause I'm trying to make up for the fact that there's a lot of glare coming up off of all this water. Um, so once you, you know, acrylic, this is acrylic paint. Acrylic paint dries relatively quickly. Now, if there's a lot of water, you know, that water will evaporate 30 minutes, guys, this should be pretty dry, okay? Um, if you have really watery parts like I do down here at the bottom, um, if you have paper towels, soak that up. But I'm purposely kind of, because of the blooming effect that I want, I'm letting the water kind of drip. But if you don't like extra water, you know, just take some paper towel or something and lift that up. You know, I'm, I can, you can take paint, you know, I can take some of this paper lift up. So there's several, there's a lot of stuff we tried today that actually does have certain names. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely. And one thing, one more thing before we stop, when you're done, sign your work, sign your work. Don't be too, too crazy with it. This is my little boom. Now I tend, I don't sign it officially until I'm really done, but I'm just demonstrating, you know, when you're finished with your, with your work, you know, don't forget to sign it. It's worth it. We want to, you know, that was you. All right. Okay. So it is showcase time, guys. It is now is your time to shine. I appreciate your patience with me and, and joining, joining us today. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's, let's take a look. All right, we're starting to pop up. Okay, Gwendolyn, wow. Wow, okay, this, yeah, see, this is what we're talking about. Let's see, can I enlarge this? I'm gonna see if I can spot like this. Oh, I can't pin it. Okay, that looks great, that looks great. Um, do we have, can we scroll over so I can see the other ones? Cause I, I can only see a few that, uh, Oh, okay, okay, all right, cool, all right. Anybody else? Let me take a look at the chat. All right, cool. Um, was there any other feedback? Let me check these comments. All right, okay, oh, I, I, Gwendolyn mentioned mountains and hills and Garrett, the Garrett Mountains. Nice. Okay. All right. And I'm going to try to, um, let me zoom in on this work. Uh, one more. You know, when I see your work, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist William H. Johnson. He was another um, very well known, uh, now he's well known, um, African American artist uh, who was incredibly talented. Uh, he did exhibit with the Harmon Foundation. The Harmon Foundation was like, one of the main benefactors of black artists in the early uh, 1900s. But uh, William H. Johnson's work is incredible. And now it's, you know, he's 
unfortunately after he passed away is when he really got his just due but that's what that's what it reminds me of I really um again you captured those bold colors um I don't know I think I like yours a little better than mine because <laughs> I didn't I, I had to walk I had to talk through mine <laughs> cool um so what's your background uh did, do you have any art background like well I'm curious no I don't have any art background I'm a oh. um I just I just love to 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 draw. Okay. My granddaughter loves the artwork. Nice. <laughs> hey, hey granddaughter. <laughs> My name's Ari. Hey. All right. Wow. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. It was all very nice and informative. Have a good day. Thank you. I appreciate that. You too. Awesome. I'm not, I just wanna make sure I'm not missing anybody else. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So if there's, I, I will leave you guys with this, you know, the more we celebrate those who've come before us, um, I think that serves as uh, motivation. Definitely that's been my, that's been my experience is to uh, keep going. And I take the, the fact that I learned something from them, the fact that I'm able to see how they saw history, because particularly for African-Americans, uh, we have to be more, uh, we have to take initiative to figure out our history a little more accurately. And I think artists are one of the first resources we have to do that. You know, you, you look at the work of these artists and that really helps you visualize how we've come through a lot of the struggles that we know have, have come, you know, previously. And, and knowing our past helps us move forward, right? Um, you know, not just providing answers for us at present, but uh, as a visual artist, the best thing I, I know to do is to, again, doc, add my piece of the narrative to the overall, you know, collective story of Black America. And you know, I, I think the more we can find our own unique perspective and really just hone in on that, you know, we, we get so it's easy to get caught up in like, oh, this is especially with social media, right? You see, you're just inundated with other artists, other people, other people, other people, and you know, competing, whether you're an artist, in a visual artist, musician, whatever. Um, and that can be detrimental to your practice sometimes. I think you have to step away from all that extra exposure um but i think there's something different you know it's different when you go back and uh you look at other artists like you know lewis uh, lewis del sart or other artists of the harlem renaissance and um you just kind of reflect on what it is they were able to say yeah he had a very unique approach um and it was it was unpopular the way he painted because he was he was really a great, like I said, he, he was a great draftsman. He drew really well, but he grew up in a time in America where the art industry shifted, you know, to abstract expressionism. And so he was able to marry his love for figurative work, you know, doing realistic, you know, people and things like that. And, you know, abstraction, which is very much, very heavily steeped in color exploration and application, you know, exploring different ways to paint instead of just how realistically you can paint. So he, he, he merged those two very well and very uniquely. Like I've never seen anyone paint like him and we will, I don't think we'll ever see another painter like him. So um, we, we unfortunately lost um, Mr. Del Sart during the pandemic uh, some months ago and um, you know, we, we definitely, I, I'm honored as one of his former students to, to pay, pay some homage. Um, so yeah, so th this is part of black history. He is black history. You know, this is what we're doing. We're, we're paying respects and that's what we do in the month, uh, month of black history, but not just this month, but every month. Um, and we appreciate the fact that plenty of people come out and uh, support the Gantt in February, right? This is the Center for African American Art and Culture. But year long, year long, we can learn this. Year long, there are more narratives, more stories 
that they share. And that's what I love about the Gantt, you know, them giving me the opportunity to share what I do and so many others. So um, by all means, keep, stay posted. There's plenty of programming like this and more and, and very varied. Um, so yeah, you're, you're around, uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted, sign up for it, visit the website, stay posted on the social media, you know, on their social media. Um, and they always let you know what's going on, what's coming. Great discussions, great dialogue and representation. And I just wanna make sure I covered that. I cover all my bases. Awesome, all right. And I stayed on, I'm a stickler for time. So I, I made it. We did. <laughs> Get some fresh air <laughs> for change and um, you know, Keep creating, add your piece of the puzzle to, to the greater narrative. And um, you guys, you guys be blessed. Thank you for joining Family First, Arts from a Distance. We hope you enjoyed this afternoon's program. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Harvey Began Center's official YouTube page for updates on future workshops and other programs. To continue the free programs that highlight some of the best in Black arts and culture, please consider supporting the Gantt Center via our Text to Give platform by texting UNMASKED to 345-345. You help further our mission. All contributions matter and truly make a difference. Visit our website, GantCenter.org, to see all of our upcoming programs.